But now look at verse 7, because we come now to the fourth of David's discoveries about God. We already saw that he saw that God was gracious, God was a refuge, God would accomplish deliverance, he hoped in that. But now verse 7, notice the emphasis again. My heart is steadfast, my heart is steadfast. He says here that God establishes. And you don't need to turn there, but whenever you think of God establishing, you think of the 40th Psalm. As he said, you have taken me out of the miry clay and put me on a rock. That is establishing. Salvation is when God digs us out of the miry clay and puts us upon the rock, Christ Jesus. He said, God, my heart is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. You have established me. The end of verse 7, I will sing. Yes, I will sing. You know what he says he discovered about God? That God makes us to praise through sorrow. Spurgeon said some people owe the great beauty of their lives to the extreme difficulties that they've come through. And I've told you before, he's one of the men I've loved to learn about. The Prince of Preachers in the English language was one of the most depressed men you ever had seen. He used to have to go to the seacoast just to recover enough strength to go back and face the congregation again. And his wife used to have to practically drag him because he was such a melancholic man. And yet he learned that out of his sorrow and out of his grief, as David said in Psalm 57, 7, the second half, I will sing, yes, I will sing praises. And David said, out of the cave, out of the distress, outside the cave, inside the cave, in my very soul, he says, I will sing praises to you. Look at verse 8. Awake, my glory. Awake, harp and lyre. He's thinking about the days he used to be on the hillsides. He thinks about when he used to be a shepherd. I will awaken at the dawn. I will give thanks to thee among the peoples. He said, God makes me thankful. That's why we can smile in sorrow. That's why we can be joyful and not melancholic and, and sad. Because God makes us thankful. He makes us thankful that he is working all things together for good. But the second part of 9, we find another one because the God who was gracious, the God who was a refuge, the God who was accomplishing deliverance, the God who had established him and made him steadfast, and the God who made him praise through sorrow, not only made him thankful, but he gives him an audience. Look at the end of verse 9. I will sing praises to thee among the nations. Now that's hilarious to think of. This guy in the Judean wilderness in a cave with 400 malcontents is going to sing praises to the nations? Do you see he got a perspective here? Here he is off in the corner running for his life and he said, I'm starting to get the big picture. God, you're running running me through the ringer so that I can sing praises on God's behalf to the nations. Among the people, I will sing praises to thee among the nations. And God opens an audience for him. And you know who the nations are at this very moment? Us. You're right now reaping the benefit of David's cave times. That was uh, 3,000 years ago. He wrote this down. And tonight, we can reap the rewards.